In this video for Math 98, we will be looking at examples from homework number 6, covering sections 13.5 in the textbook. The topic is applications of these exponential and logarithmic functions, and these are like problems 17 through 25 on homework number 6. Let's use logarithms to solve exponential equations. We've seen how to solve exponential equations such as 2 to the x equals 32. One of the ways to do this is to find a common base. In this case, 32 is 2 to the fifth power. And so you can rewrite the equation as 2 to the x equals 2 to the fifth. And then that implies that x equals 5. Or a slightly more complicated problem, 8 to the x equals 16. Now, 16 is not a power of 8. And so you need to find a base that both 8 and 16 are uh, powers of. So we're going to try 2. 8 is 2 cubed. So that's 2 cubed to the x by replacing 8 with 2 cubed equals 2 to the fourth. Now that gives me, using the laws of exponents, 2 to the 3x equals 2 to the fourth. So 3x equals 4 and x equals 4 thirds. And we also saw in the last section that 10 to the x equals 51. We could rewrite this using the logarithm that this is really asking you, what power do I raise the base 10 to to get 51? So it's asking you for this logarithm. And your calculator has log base 10, sometimes known as the common log, on your calculator. So you could pull out your calculator, turn it on, and have log 51. And that would tell you that this is approximately 1.708. Now, not all exponential equations, however, can be written with the same base. This 2 to the x equals 32 and a to the x equals 16 are kind of special cases. Nor are all exponential equations power of 10 and can be used as um, common logarithms. So, we, for example, we might have this problem, 2 to the x equals 7. Can't really write 7 as a power of 2, and it's not 10 to the x, so we need a new tool. And this new tool we have is called the change of base formula. And it basically says, log base b of a equals log of a over log of b. And notice log here has no base. That means these are common logs. For example, 2 to the x equals 3 is basically asking you the question, what power do I raise 2 to get the answer 3? So I'm asking you for log base 2 of 3. Now that equals log base According to this change of base formula, that equals log of 3 over log of 2. So I could take my calculator and do log of 3 divided by log of 2. And that gives me that this is approximately 1.58. Now you'll notice that kind of makes sense here because 2 to the first is 2 and 2 to the second is 4. So this makes sense that this exponent would be between 1 and 2. What about this one? 2 to the x equals 5. Again, that is asking you for the log base 2 of 5. What power do I raise 2 to to get the answer 5? Using a change of base formula, that's log of 5 over log of 2. And if you do that, you'll end up with an answer that's approximately 2.32. Try this one on your own. 2 to the x equals 10. So that's a log base 2 of 10. And you, can, again, can use your calculator to find approximation. I won't do that on this one. So this could be log base 10 of 10 over log base 2. Now notice log base 10 of 10 is just one. So you could leave it like this, or you could use your calculator. What is this rewritten as a logarithm? This is log base two 
of 24. So using the change of base formula again, that's log of 24 over log of 2. And you could use your calculator to get an approximation. And even this problem, which we solved earlier and we got the answer 5, let's see what that looks like with the change of base formula. Remember, this is log base 2. What power do you raise 2 to to get 32? Let's see if this works using my calculator. So I'm going to do log of 32 over log of 2 using my change of base formula. So log of 32 divided by log of 2 gives me 5. So I get the same answer that I would have had I done it the other way. So the change of base formula is extremely useful for solving exponential equations. Here's some practice problems for you to try. You might want to try these on your own and then restart the video once you have completed them. All right, this is log base 4 of 3 which is log of 3 over log of 4. If I use that on my calculator, log of 3 divided by log of 4 gives me approximately 0.79. This one, log base 4 of 12. So that's log of 12 over log of 4. And again, using my calculator, log of 12 divided by log of 4 gives me approximately 1.79. Here, log base 4 of 20 is what this is asking. So this gives me log of 20 over log of 4. And that's approximately equal to 2.16. And finally, this one will give you log base 4 of 80. So that's log of 80 over log of 4. And that would give you about 3.16. OK? Now, this is wonderful. The change of base formula is useful when you have an exponential equation, a to the x equals b. But often, exponential equations are not written in this form. In order to change an exponential equation, y equals a b to the x, to an equivalent logarithmic equation, we first divide both sides by this number a. So take a look at this example. This is 40 equals 20 times this to the x. Now notice that's a times b to the x. So this is of this form here. And before we deal with the logarithms, we want to divide both sides by 20. And that gives you 2 equals 1.09x. Now, that is looking for log base 109 of 2, or what power do I raise 1.09 to to get 2? Using the change of base formula, that gives me this solution here. So this would be log of 2 divided by log 1.09. And that's going to be uh, approximately 8.04. Okay, so that gives me that answer right there. Now, this type of exponential equation is much more common than the type here. So let's look at a few more like this. Here's another one. See if you can solve this one on your own. Okay, first thing I should do is get rid of this a, this 36. So 18 divided by 36 is 1 half, so this gives me 1 half equals 0.25 to the x. If you think about this, you can actually do this problem without using logarithms. But let's go ahead and use logarithms. So log base 0.25, answer 1 half. Using change of base formula, that's log of answer over log of base. Using my calculator, that's log of 1 half divided by log of 0.25. And that's going to give me a half, OK? So that's kind of a way to deal with these exponential equations using logarithms. Now, what are some applications? 
Well, there are numerous applications of logarithms, and we're just going to look at a few. One of these is from chemistry, and that's the notion of pH. pH equals minus log, and here I mean log base 10, of this H+. Plus. And this H+, plus is called the hydrogen ion concentration. If pH is less than 7, then what we have is an acid. If pH is greater than 7, we have something that is a base or is more alkaline. And if pH equals 7, that's considered like distilled water, just normal. So let's use this equation involving a logarithm to help us solve some problems. Here's an example. Find the pH of the following substances. NaOH, where the hydrogen ion concentration is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14 moles. Now, all I have to do is really this. pH equals minus log of this, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. Now, again, you can do this problem in your head, but let's use our calculators to try to solve this. So I'm going to clear this out a little. I'm going to put in the minus sign. And remember, the minus sign is down here. So minus log 1.0 times 10 raised to the negative 14. And that's going to give me 14. So clearly, this substance okay, is greater than 7, this pH. So this is very basic. Okay, Milk of magnesia has a hydrogen ion concentration of this. So again, I use pH equals minus log of 1.0 times 10 to the minus 10. And if you use your calculator to do that, you should get an answer of 10. So this pH also is greater than 7, so it's also basic. Now, another type of question involving pH is this one, where we give you the pH, and you have to find the hydrogen ion concentration. So you need the formula, pH equals minus log of H plus. So you know the pH is 7.5. Now, this log, remember, is log base 10. And if you recall the most important rule about logarithms, log base b of a equals x is the same as saying b to the x equals a. So we're going to write this as 10 to the 7.5. OK, well, first, um, excuse me. First, we're going to divide by negative 1. We need to get the log by itself. And then 10 to the negative 7.5 is equal to hydrogen ion concentration. Now, use your calculator. If I bring my calculator over here, 10 raised to the negative 7.5 is going to give me this 3.16227762 e to the minus 8. Now, what that means is that that is times 10 to the minus 8. So this is an approximation of what your hydrogen ion concentration will be. So that's pH. Another example of an application of logs is the idea of decibels, which is used to measure intensity of sound. And here's a formula. Use n equals 10 log i over i sub 0, where n is the sound in decibels, i is watts per square meter, and i sub 0 equals 10 to the minus 12 watts per square meter. And we're going to use that formula to help us solve this problem. 100 decibel output for an iPod at the year is how many times louder than the 91 decibel output of an air power drill 15 yards away. So I'm going to use this formula. And let's first deal with the 100 decibels. Okay. So that's N. And we remember, and I'm going to call this I1 here for my first problem. We remember that I to the 0 is minus 12, 10 to the minus 12. Divide both sides by 10, and I end up with this. And 
Now again, using that rule of logarithms to turn into an exponential, that's 10 to the 10 equals i1 over 10 to the minus 12. Then multiply both sides by 10 to the minus 12. And if you do 10 to the minus 12 times 10 to the 10, you can add these exponents, and that's 10 to the minus 2 equals i1. By the same notion, a 91 decibel drill, I'm going to use this formula, but I'm going to call this i2 here. Divide both sides by 10, that's 9.1. And that's 10 to the 9.1 equals log base 10 equals, excuse me, I2 over 10 to the minus 12. Multiplies both sides by 10 to the minus 12. And so minus 12 plus 9.1, so if you're going to use the laws of exponents here, this is going to give you 10 to the minus 2.9 for I2. So if you're comparing these two, we might just look at I1 over I2, that's going to be 10 to the minus 2 over 10 to the minus 2.9. If you do this, this is 10 to the 0.9. And 10 raised to the 0.9 power is about 7 times, so this is approximately 7.94, or about 8 times louder. So what this tells you is that 100 decibel output at your iPod, at your ear, is about eight times louder than an air-powered drill 15 yards away. One last application we can look at is the idea of interest. And you might recall that the future value equals the present value times one plus the interest rate raised to t. This was called the annual percentage rate. So we might want to find how long to the next higher year it will take $1,000 to grow to a million at 10% interest rate. So I'm going to use this formula. I start with $1,000. I want it to grow to a million. And I have 10% interest rate. This time I don't know T. Now this right here, if I divide both sides by 1,000, I get 1,000 equals 1.10 to the T. Now using my laws a change of base formula. This gives you log of 1.10 to the 1,000. So that's log of 1,000 over log of 1.10. So log of 1,000 divided by log of 1.10 gives you that this is about 72.5 years. So what this tells you is don't invest your thousand dollars at 10% interest and expect to be alive uh, by the time it turns out to be a million. So that takes an awful long time to do that. Here's another example which is similar to the interest formula but is a little different context than money. Suppose water consumption in a large city increases by 9% per year. In how many years will the consumption double? So I'm going to use this growth interest formula here again. And in this case, you know that your interest rate or your increase is 9% per year. Now, if you start with an amount P and you want it to double, how much is that? That's 2P. To solve this exponential equation, I'm going to divide both sides by P. And I get this. Again, using my change of base, this is log of 2 over log of 1.09. So let's do that. Log 2 divided by log of 1.09. So this is about 8.04 years. So it will take about 8 years for consumption to double if water consumption is increasing at 9% per year. I hope you have found this video useful.